welcome to worship at Pittsburgh United Methodist Church. My name is Sarah Beth Panel. I'm the pastor here at PUMC. We are so glad that you are here, that you're joining us for worship today, whether you're already connected to our church family or you're tuning in for the very first time. We're so glad that you're here. We believe as a church family that uh, lifting our hearts together in worship is crucial to who we are as people of God, as followers of Christ. And so even during this time, with everything going on in the world, we are seeking to join our hearts together in worship each and every week. We have been sharing in online worship since March 15th of this year, uh, ever since COVID-19 first emerged in our community here in Chatham County and across our state of North Carolina. Uh, this has been three months, the past three months. Uh, this has been unlike anything any of us have ever experienced before. And while we are thankful for this chance that we have to connect via technology, um, we know that it just isn't the same as being gathered together uh, in a sacred space uh, to lift our hearts together in person and worship. Our staff and our church leadership have been prayerfully considering what being church looks like during this time, and we are grateful for your prayers, your support, your grace, and your flexibility. For the past month in particular, especially called Task Force, um, has been working together to consider how we can move towards regathering in person. Our task force has done a lot of research, a lot of research. Uh, we have collected a lot of resources and we've participated in a number of events, uh, even a webinar through Duke University Hospital uh, to help us better understand, help us to better prepare and help us to learn more about this reality that we are facing right now. We also asked our church family uh, to share with us how they're doing and to share with us what they're hoping for during this time. And based on everything that we've learned and everything that we've heard um, from our church family and beyond, our regathering task force recommended to our administrative council, which is the governing body of our church family, our task force recommended that we continue worshiping online for the near future. We are committed to expanding our online ministry, even as we worship online, and we are seeking ways to safely gather in smaller groups as we move forward. We want to stay connected with one another, and we want to be creative in fulfilling our mission to grow disciples of Jesus in faith, hope, and love. And above all, right, above all else right now, we want to ensure uh, the health and well-being of our church family. Our task force is uh, committing to reassessing our situation and our needs every single month um, so that as new opportunities arise and new plans are made, we will continue to share them with you. We would love to hear from you, to hear your feedback, or to hear what questions you might have. Uh, you can share those with us at pittsboroumc at gmail.com. We'd love for you to send us an email and share, share with us your thoughts or your questions. But in the meantime, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued financial generosity. Um, thank you for your fervent prayers. Thank you for your gracious support. You all are loving one another so well right now. And we are so blessed. We are so blessed to be in ministry together in new ways right now. May this time of worship be a blessing to us. May we be reminded of God's extravagant love for each and every one of us today. And may the peace of Christ be with you. Let us join our hearts and voices together in our call to worship from Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be gracious to me, O Lord. Gladden the soul of your servant. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, for you are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Amen. I 
nothing I will fear as long as you are scripture reading today comes from Luke's gospel, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, He said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, but here I am starving to death. I will set out and I will go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. You never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us 
us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this chance that we have to join our hearts together in worship. And Lord, we pray that as we come as your children today, entering into your presence, filled with grace and mercy and love, we pray that we, like the prodigal son, might hear good news for our lives today, good news of grace and hope and forgiveness. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. A few weeks into my sophomore year at Carolina, uh, I looked around and realized that I had been on the wrong track. It was the third semester of my biology major uh, that I fully anticipated was going to be a stepping stone towards medical school. This dream, this vision that I had had uh, for years, for most of my life, of becoming a doctor. But that semester, by the time I had made it through organic chemistry, and I had made my way into analytical chemistry and genetics and molecular biology classes, um, I suddenly realized how much I hated it. <laughs> all of it. I hated all of it. I was failing analytical chemistry class and I was barely pulling a C in genetics class. And I hated every minute of it. Hated it. I was miserable. And no matter how hard I tried to understand the material, no matter how many times my classmates tried to explain it to me, no matter how many times I went to see the professor during office hours, it was a struggle. <laughs> and it was the first time in my life that I had ever failed at anything that I'd ever tried to do in school. After spending an entire day preparing a speech <laughs> and uh, preparing myself, building up the courage to call my parents and tell them the news, uh, by the time I sat down that night in my dorm room and started to dial the number, I remember my hands were just trembling with fear. And when my mom answered the phone that night, I remember I burst into tears and I could barely even get the words out. And my mom quickly passed the telephone to my dad after she had tried so hard to console me <laughs> from 60 miles away. And when my dad got on the phone, I pulled it together long enough to launch into the speech that I had so carefully prepared. This speech explaining what was happening, how hard I had tried, uh, explained my plan for dropping one of those classes and how I would make up the credits later and how I really felt like I was supposed to be doing something else within my life, but I didn't really know what and how sorry I was for how how I was letting them down and how sorry I was for disappointing them after I told them for years that I was going to go to medical school and be a doctor. And when I was finally finished laying out my case by case, you know, point by point case, I braced myself for what he would say. And after a deep breath, my dad said, well, Sarah Beth, I've always known that your gifts weren't in science. <laughs> all these years later, I can't really remember all of the words of wisdom and care that he said to me over the phone after that. I remember that first sentence and everything else is kind of a blur. But I do remember feeling just this mix of relief and surprise and humility and gratitude and hope. And I remember getting off the phone knowing that I was loved and that I was enough. Every time I hear this story or I read this story from Luke's gospel about um, this parable that Jesus tells about a father welcoming home a son who had lost his way. 
The part that always resonates with me is the moment when this son in the story looks around at the mess that he has made. And he comes to his senses and he begins um, plotting out his explanatory speech that he's going to give to his dad when he gets back home. I think that's got to be the realest part of this whole story, right? Like, how real is that? <laughs> right? This is the story for every kid who has ever had to plan and prepare for how they would give some news to their parents. Right? For every kid who ever had to explain how the car got dented, how the window got broken, how the report card ended up with those grades. For every kid who ever had to explain how that mistake got made or how sorry you were or how you planned to make it right or how you didn't know what to do next and explaining how without actually saying it, you were hoping that you were still loved and that things would be okay. This is a story of every kid who has ever waited with bated breath for what their parent would say or what their parent would do when the mess was suddenly out in the open. This is the story of every kid who has ever hoped that they were more than the mistake that they made. This is the story of every kid who has ever hoped they were still worthy of love. This is also the story of every parent who has ever worried for their child. This is the story of every parent who hoped that they were doing a good job at this parenting thing. This is a story for every parent who has ever hoped that what they had said and what they had done and what they had given to their children was enough. This is a story of every parent who waited up to make sure that the car was in the driveway by curfew. This is a story for every parent who lingered a little while in the hallway on the first day of kindergarten. For every parent who prayed for their new freshman as they drove the car away from the dorm room on moving day. This is a story of every parent who has ever watched their child struggle with mean friends or an abusive relationship or struggled with making good choices or struggled to raise their own children or struggling to overcome an addiction. This is the story of every parent who has waited on the edge of their seat, looking and hoping for when they would be reunited with the child that they have loved since before they were born. More importantly, this is the story of our God who created us. This is the story of our God who created us, who breathed life, the breath of life into each of us. This is the story of our God who calls each of us beloved children. This is the story that Jesus tells when he is accused of spending too much time with sinners. Prostitutes and tax collectors, to be exact. This is the story that Jesus tells to help us understand the persistent, unrelenting, boundless, extravagant love of God. This is the story that for years has been called the story of the prodigal son. The word prodigal means to spend extravagantly and absolutely this son, the wayward son in this story spends extravagantly, right? It's a story of a prodigal son. But in some ways I wish that we had named this story the story of the prodigal father instead. Because even though this wayward son spent extravagantly, he wasted and spent everything that his father had given to him, it's the father who spends extravagantly as well, perhaps even more so. This father gives all that he can to welcome home his son, to celebrate that his son, who once was lost, is now found. 
He holds nothing back when his son returns home. He brings out the finest robe and the shiniest ring and the nicest sandals and the fattest calf for the barbecue giving all of this, lavishing all of this upon his son who has returned home. And let's be honest, this son does not receive the welcome that he expected. He had planned and prepared his speech, expecting what his father would do, and this is not what he expected. And it's not really what he deserves either. His father instead is filled with compassion and breaks in a dead run to greet his son before he even reaches the house. And before his son can even get through the speech that he has rehearsed to confess his mistakes and explain himself and ask for forgiveness, his father puts his arms around him and kisses him and begins to make preparations for an extravagant feast in his honor. But do you know the father's extravagance doesn't stop there? Even though the lost son comes home, it's the eldest son, the older brother, that the father has to go looking for. See, when the older brother realizes that his pain in the neck little brother has come home and that there's a party being given in his honor, he throws a temper tantrum and he goes off to sulk by himself. He's frustrated. He is refusing to come to the party, to even see his brother, to celebrate, right? He refuses to participate in the celebration. He'd rather be alone. He is cutting his nose off in spite of his face, as my mother would say. This son is hurt, and he's angry, and he's jealous. Why has my little brother, who was so selfish and foolish, why is he being rewarded? When I'm the one who was so faithful to my father, when I'm the one that has worked so hard, how is this fair? But see, when his father looks around and realizes that his eldest son is not there, he goes looking for him. He goes looking for him to beg and plead for him to come and to join the celebration. This father not only showers his youngest son with joy when he returns home, but he also goes and he begs and he pleads, pouring out his heart for his oldest son to come and to share in the joy himself. It strikes me this week that this story is about two children, not just one. It is a story about two children, both of whom are lost. And it is by the persistent grace of their father, both of them are found. This is the story of how God loves this is the story of how God comes running to us and how God comes looking for us. Whether we have been too foolish to turn back to God when we should have or when we have been too proud to see that we need God just as much as anybody else, God comes running towards us. God comes looking for us. God continues to reach out to us in grace and love and God rejoices extravagantly when we are found. This story of a father and his children is the story of our God who loves us extravagantly. And I believe that this is a story that we need to hear always, but perhaps even more so on Father's Day. See, days like Father's Day are wonderful and they are complicated. They remind us 
holidays like this remind us that no holiday and no person, including no parent, is perfect. See, for some, today, this day, Father's Day, is the day when we have the chance to celebrate the fathers in our lives who love us and support us. And in just a moment, you're going to hear some incredible celebrations from some of our youngest disciples, some of our children here celebrating their dads. That is what Father's Day is for. And yet for some of us, this is also a day that is complicated and painful. Father's Day can remind us of the father that we lost or even the father that we never had or the father we never knew. It can remind us of a father who hurt us or a father who let us down. For some, this is a day when you will be able to gather with your children or your grandchildren and give thanks for the gift of family. And for some of you, it will be difficult to not be with loved ones in the midst of COVID, to settle for a Zoom call or a phone call rather than face-to-face. -face. And for others, today is a day that makes grief fresh for you as a father the grief of losing a child or the grief of a relationship that has been lost or strained. But friends, I pray that whatever today brings, whatever today brings for you and your family, please know, hear this good news. Know that you belong to the family of God. You belong to the family of God. You belong to the one who has called you a beloved child. You belong to the one who greets you with open arms and celebrates you with joy. You are a beloved child of God. And like this story today, of a father who extravagantly loves his children. Today, we give thanks for our God who extravagantly loves each and every one of us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. great. God is good. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. We hope that you guys have a wonderful day celebrating with your families. We want to take this time and thank you for everything that you do for us and in the lives of our children. Your children have put together some special messages for each of you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. What do you like to do with daddy, Clara? A look. Daddy's at work, I know, but what do you like to do with Daddy? Do you like to go on the boat with Daddy? Yeah. What do you do with Daddy on the boat? <laughs> what do you do on the boat with Daddy? Uh, a snack. You eat a snack? Yeah, what else do you like to do with Daddy? A uh, boat. Go on the boat? Okay, can you say, I love you, Daddy? I love you, Dad. Hi, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. I love you. What does Daddy say to you the most? Um, he says, hi, pumpkin. <laughs> what does daddy do to make you feel special? Um, he, he, um, reads a book with me and he does like I with me. Hi, I'm Annalise Sabla and my dad makes me feel special because I'm the only girl and his favorite child. <laughs> I love you, Dad. Happy Father's Day. What do you like to do the most with Dad? Go fishing with him. What makes your daddy the best? 
is ball with me. I love my daddy because he jumps on the trampoline with me. I love my daddy because he lets me get on his shoulders. I love my daddy because he goes bike riding with me. I love my daddy because he takes me camping. I love my daddy because he takes me to Disney World. I love my daddy because he loves me. My dad is the best because he always cares about me and is always like looking to see if we are okay. My favorite thing to do with my dad is going boating on the lake and he always says for me to clean out the blender in the sink. Charlotte, what do you like doing with daddy? Going to the beach with him. Going to the beach. What does daddy say to you the most? Um, I love you. Happy Father's Day. The thing that makes my dad the best is that he plays football with me and talks to me when times are rough. Thank you, Dad. Love you. <laughs> my dad's the best because when he pushed me on the swing and played basketball with me and dubbed me on the trampoline. Love you. Happy Father's Day. I love playing music with my dad because he makes it fun and special. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. What makes your dad the best? Um, he's nice, friendly, and funny. What do you like to do with your dad? Play outside and play video games. What's your message to dad for Father's Day? Happy Father's Day and I love you. What do you love the most about your dad? I like that he's a hero and I like watching TV shows with him. I love you, Dad! Hey, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Say, hey, you're the best. You're the best. What my dad says most to me is yes or no. I love my daddy because he cares about me. What I do most is my dad is fishing. I love you, daddy. My favorite thing to do with dad is watch movies with him. Happy Father's Day, I love you. I love my dad because he does read stories to me. Bye bye dad, I love you, bye bye. Okay, Sawyer, what makes your daddy the best? Because he's so super cool. All right. And what do you like to do with daddy the most? Um, listen to the rain and play with him. My favorite thing to do with daddy. He looks so handsome. I like playing all the princesses with him. And he waits to me and and he snuggles. I like snuggling with him. Okay, so what makes your daddy the best? Because he snuggles with me. Okay. Everly, why is your daddy the best? Because he am. Because why? Because he am. Because he am?
changed our saints. He took his seat above. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice. Rejoice again. I say rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail. to lift our prayers and offer our gifts to God today. We want to thank you for the countless ways that you continue to support the life and ministry of our church through your prayers, your support, your gifts, and your presence, even from a distance. We are grateful for you and grateful for all the ways that you serve your church family. If you would like to share a gift with us uh, through our church, you can do so by um, giving online at our website, pittsburghunitedmethodist.org, Or you can mail your gifts by check to PUMC PO Box 716, Pittsburgh, North Carolina, 27312. If there are specific ways that our church family can be praying with you and your loved ones during this time, we would love to hear how we can do so. You can share your prayer requests, your joys, and your concerns with us at our website as well, pittsburghunitedmethodist.org. But here in this moment together, from many different places, we join our hearts together to lift our prayers to God. So let us pray. May the Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, we gather in your presence here to give you thanks and to celebrate the gift of your love. For it is your love that is steadfast in supporting and nurturing and challenging us in ways that strengthen and transform us. Lord, we offer you praise and thanksgiving for your unfailing presence in our lives and for all of the blessings that you generously bestow upon us. Lord, today we confess to you that we often are like the prodigal son, selfish and wasteful, taking for granted the blessings that you have given. Lord, we confess that we are often like the older brother, the older son who is jealous and slow to offer forgiveness. Lord, we confess to you that we are your children who are often in need of your forgiveness. Even here in this moment, we come bearing our souls to you, confessing the ways that we have fallen short this week and asking and trusting that you are the God who welcomes us with open arms, embracing and welcoming us home through your grace and through your love and by your mercy. And so trusting in who you are and all that you do for us and leaning on your grace that you bestow so freely upon us, we come offering our prayers to you today. Lord, we thank you that you have called us your beloved children, that you have created us, to be brothers and sisters to one another through Christ our Lord. We give thanks that by your grace you have made us into one family. And today as your children, we pray. On this special day, O God, this holiday when we give thanks for our fathers, we celebrate the men in our lives who have cared for us, provided for us, shielded us with love and strength. 
We are grateful for all they've taught us and for all the ways they've encouraged us in every season of life. God, for the men who gave us life, the men who raised us and shaped us into the people we are today, to the men who have been our fathers in faith, we give you thanks. Lord, today we remember everyone among us for whom this holiday is difficult. We lift up to you those who are grieving the loss of a father and for fathers who are grieving the loss of a child. Lord, we lift up to you every relationship that has been strained by hurtful words or painful memories. Lord, we trust you with the hearts of those we love today. And we trust you with all of the pain and the joy that we carry with us this day. God, we pray that you would bless every single father today, that you would give them your wisdom, your grace, and your strength, and help all of us as brothers and sisters in Christ to be your family on earth as we shall be in heaven. Lord, we lift up to you, O God, your beloved children around the world, for all who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, for all of those in need of healing, for all of those who are in need, for all of those who are grieving, and for all of those whose needs are known to you alone today. Lord, we trust in you. We give thanks for your grace and for your love that surrounds us each day. And we thank you for the forgiveness that you offer to us through Christ our Lord. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. When the storm is raging all around me are the peace that calms my troubled sea. And when the cares of this world darken my day, you are the light that shines and shows me the way. Oh, the beauty of your majesty. On the cross you show your love for me. Beautiful Lord, awesome and mighty, captured by this love I see. Beautiful Lord, tender and holy, your mercy brings me to my knees. It's your mercy that has made me. My sin is all that I can see. Your grace remains the shelter that I see. And when my weakness is all I can give, your gentle spirit gives me strength again. Oh, the beauty of your majesty. Of your majesty, 
On the cross you show your love for me Beautiful Lord Awesome and mighty Captured by this love I see Beautiful Lord Tender and holy Your mercy brings me to my It's your mercy that has made me free, beautiful Lord. Oh, the beauty of your majesty. On the cross you show your love for me. Beautiful Lord, awesome and mighty, captured by this love I see. Beautiful Lord, tender and holy, Your mercy brings me to my knees. It's your mercy that has made me free. Friends, here in just a moment, right after worship, you'll have the chance to uh, see some jokes from some dads in our congregation. Uh, we had a dad joke competition uh, sponsored by our children's ministry here at PUMC, celebrating uh, the joy and gift of laughter and the gift of uh, our fathers among us. Um, so we hope that you'll tune in and watch those here in just a minute. Um, you'll hear some uh, good puns and plays on words. <laughs> May they be a gift of joy and laughter for you today. But as we depart from this time of worship, I pray that you would go giving thanks. May your heart be overflowing with the assurance of our God who loves you extravagantly. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And I am lifted by your love to sing. chicken coop only have two doors. I don't know, Dad. Why? Well, if it had four, it would be a chicken sedan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Emma! What, Dad? Can you grab me a Kleenex? Sure. Hey, you know <laughs> something? How do you make a Kleenex dance? I don't know. <sighs> you put a little buggy in it. Sure, son, that'd be fun. Hey, why did the bike fall over? I don't know. He was too tired. <laughs> why didn't the skeleton go to the party? Because he had no body to go with. <laughs> no one taught me that. Hey, kids. What? What kind of music do planets like? I don't know. Neptune. Why do you never give Elsa any balloons? Why, Dad? Because she just let it go! <laughs> what did the baby corn say to the mama corn? I don't know. Where's popcorn? <laughs> hey, kids. Yes. Do you know why seagulls fly over the sea? No. Because if they flew over the bay, they would be called bagels. <laughs> You know why I don't like stairs? They're always up to something. <laughs> <laughs>
my pile. Do you know what happens when spring comes? No. I get so excited, I wet my plants. <laughs> hey, did y'all want to hear a joke about construction? Sorry, I'm still working on it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Fix. Fix who? Fix the doorbell, it's broken. <laughs> the kids. Yes. Yeah. Cows like to read the most. Catalogs. <laughs> All right. Hey Brody, what did the worker say at the rubber band factory when he lost his job? I don't know what. Oh snap! <laughs> Hi kids. Do you know why the coach went to the bank to get his quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Owen, what do you call a sleeping bull? I don't know that. A bulldozer. <laughs> hey, Kyle. What? Why don't eggs ever tell jokes? I don't know, Dad. Because they crack each other up. Oh! <laughs>